Welcome back to the Code Long series on creating a chat application. What we have done so far is create a simple HTML file which renders a form using Flask WT forms. Right now it's a dummy form, it does not connect to anything. In this video, we'll be linking this form to a database. We'll be using Flask SQL Alchemy. Before we start, just a quick word on what is SQL Alchemy library and the Flask extension, Flask SQL Alchemy. So, what is SQL Alchemy? In simple words, SQL Alchemy is a set of tools to access various SQL databases like SQLite, MySQL, MS SQL, and in our case, Postgres SQL. With SQL Alchemy, you can use classes and class like objects and features with a database. Using SQL Alchemy, we won't have to write raw SQL code every time we want to update or modify an item in the database. In this project, we'll be using Flask SQL Alchemy, which is a Flask extension that adds a layer of features on top of SQL Alchemy. By the way, we don't necessarily need SQL Alchemy or Flask SQL Alchemy to connect to a database, but these are popular tools and we will use them in this project. So to start, let's install Flask SQL Alchemy extension and just like we did in the previous videos in the series, we'll be using pip install. Pip install Flask SQL Alchemy. When you install Flask SQL Alchemy, it will automatically install SQL Alchemy library, so we don't have to install it separately. Next, we need to install a driver which will allow Python to work with Postgres database. This driver is called psychopg2 and we will pip install it. We have successfully installed it. So we'll define the model for the database in a separate file and let's call this models.py. This is the file where we will define the class. Each table in our database will be a class in this file. First, we import SQL Alchemy class from Flask SQL Alchemy. Next, we define the SQL Alchemy object. Later in this video, we will configure the Flask application to use this object. Here, let's ask ourselves what is the information we want to store in the database from the registration page. So from this page right here, what is the information we want to store? We want to store the username and we want to store the password. In this video, we will be saving the password in plain text. This is not a great idea from a security perspective. In a subsequent video, that's video number 8 in the series, we will rewrite parts of the application to hash the password and save only the hashed value of the password. So if you want to jump to that video, you can click on the link below in the description. It's part 8 of this video series. Now remember how I said SQL Alchemy gives us the ability to use classes and class-like objects. So step one, we need to define a class. And here's how we do it. The class user is going to inherit from the model SQL Alchemy database. The first property of the class is the name of the table. Now we can give the table a name if we want. If we don't give the table a name, then Flask SQL Alchemy will take the name of the class, which is user, and use the lowercase version of this name as the name of the table. If we don't want to do that, we can also explicitly define the table name using this syntax. Let's call our table users. Each column in the database is going to be a property of this class. We can start with setting a primary key. This will be an integer and it will be the primary key. Username will be a string. We can optionally define the maximum length if we want. Let's give it a 25 character limit. We want to make sure that the value entered is unique. We don't want duplicate usernames. And this field should not be empty. Password will be the same, but we don't need to specify the maximum length. We don't have a condition that passwords cannot be duplicate, as in two different users can have two identical passwords. And finally, the field cannot be empty. Now, we need to create the table. We can do this in two ways. We can either write code in Python and use something like db.create underscore all, which will create the table and the columns as we have specified over here. We would need to run this only once to create the table. 
However, since this is a one-time activity and the fact that we have already PostgreSQL installed in our system, we can also go ahead and create the table in Postgres directly. In this video series, we will create the table in Postgres database directly. In the distribution code, I will include a file called create.py, which will have Python syntax for creating the table using Flask SQL Alchemy. If you have any questions on the file, you can leave a comment below. Now to start Postgres SQL, let's go to the terminal. I am in the folder that we have created in the first video, RChat, and I have the virtual environment activated. There are two things we need here. We need to link the database we set up in Heroku in part one of the series. And second, we need PostgreSQL installed in our system. In case you're not sure how to do either of them, then please watch the first part of this video series where we do this. You can find the link in the description below. Okay, step one. Let's get the database URI from Heroku. So I already have an account. I'll just log in. So this is the app that we had created. Let's click on it. From here, click on Heroku Postgres. Click on Settings, View Credentials, and URI. So that's the link that we want. Let's go back to the terminal. So we can connect to the database from the terminal itself. For the method we are using, we will need to have PostgreSQL installed in our system. This is by far the easiest way to do this. In case you're not sure how to do this, please watch part one of the series. You will find the link in the description below. To connect to a PostgreSQL database, provided you have PostgreSQL installed in your system, the syntax is PSQL and then paste the link to the database. I have connected to the database to see if there are any tables. Type in backslash dt. Did not find any relations. No surprise there. There are no tables in this database and we will use PostgreSQL syntax to create it. The way we do it is create table and then table name. We had called it users in model.py. The first column will be ID. In our models file, ID is an integer. Because it is also the primary key, SQL Alchemy will auto-increment the ID for us. That is, each time we add a new entry to the database, we don't have to pass in a new ID. This ID will increment by one. And then the data type is integer. But here is a problem. For SQL Alchemy to auto-increment something, we need to explicitly state it. So we cannot use the data type as an integer Rather, we will have to use serial. This tells PostgreSQL to auto-increment this field. We will also set it as the primary key. The next column is username. We need to figure out what data type would it be. If you look at models.py, we had declared it as db.string. This is a string field. Now this is fine because we were using SQL Alchemy syntax. However, Postgres does not have a data type called string. Instead, we will use varchar as the data type. In the previous video, that is part 4 of the series, we had specified the username can be up to 25 characters. So that's how we specified the maximum length. It also has to be unique, no duplicate usernames. Finally, this field cannot be empty. For password, we need to see what data type is used. We had used string in SQL Alchemy. The string data type in username corresponds to varchar data type in PostgreSQL. Turns out this string also corresponds to another Postgres data type called text. Text is identical to varchar. The only difference is we are not specifying a maximum length. We also know that the field cannot be empty. So you can see create table. This is PostgreSQL's way of confirming that the table has been created successfully. Let's verify it using backslash dt. The table called users exists. Let's see the contents of the table. So that's backslash d and then the name of the table. There is id and by default this will auto increment. You have username which can take in up to 25 characters and you have password which is a text field. It can have an arbitrary number of characters there. Great, now let's go to our main application.py file and use some of this information. First of all, let me remove this. Save this file and open application.py.
we import the contents of models.py. Next, let's configure the database. We need to tell Flask SQL Alchemy the location of the database we will be accessing and modifying. To do this, the syntax is app object dot configure, then SQL Alchemy underscore database underscore URI, and then the link to the database. In our case, the database is hosted in Heroku, so we just need to paste the database URI that we copied earlier. The only reason I know how to do this is by referring to the documentation. So make sure that you get into the habit of referring to the documentation. I will leave a link below to the SQL Alchemy documentation page, so be sure to check it out. By the way, since we'll be publishing the source online, from a security perspective, it's not a good idea to expose your database credentials like the way we have done right here. When we talk about deployment, that's part 13 of this video series, and we will come back to this section and rewrite this in a more secure way. But for now, just pasting the database URI like I have done here will work. Next, we initialize a connection to our database. So this is the existing code we already wrote to have a basic registration form displayed. All we have done is defined a simple root here for the page. And what this does is it renders those three fields. So we had written all this in the previous video when we were using WT Forms and Flask WT Form extension. Those of you who have not gone through the video, don't worry about it. All it does is it instantiates an instance of the registration form. If you're curious, you can go back and watch the video. That's part four of the series. Otherwise, it's not very material to what we are doing right now. If you remember, this was the line of code that we had written, which checks that there are no validation errors in the form, and the form has been submitted using the post method. Instead of just returning great success, let's change this code. To obtain the username and password that the user entered in the form. So to obtain these two values, we can use Flask WT form syntax to do this. The value of the username will be stored in a variable called username. To access the value entered by the user, name of the form, which is reg underscore form, dot name of the field, which is username, dot data. Similarly, password would be reg underscore form dot password dot data. If we have reached here in the application logic, this means that we have cleared basic form validation. Now, before we try and save the username and password to the database, we need to make sure that the username does not exist because remember, we cannot have duplicate usernames. Let's do that check right now. We'll use Flask SQL Alchemy syntax for this. We need to extract a user object. SQL Alchemy has a query attribute that we can use to get the data from the database. We don't want it to return everything from the database. We want it to filter the results to include only values where the username column of our database has a value that matches this username right here. We can extract all such rows where the username entered by the user matches any other username in the database. However, when we defined our model a few minutes back, we had already put in a constraint on the username column that every username should be unique. So if you just get the first row, that's going to achieve the same objective. This works exactly the same as limit one in raw PostgreSQL syntax. With this object, we can retrieve the associated values. For example, if you want to get the username, we can type user underscore object dot username. This will give you the username associated with this user. Now, if you want to get the password, for example, then you can do the same thing, except instead of username, password field is stored in the column called password. So just replace the word username with password. And similarly, if you want to get the ID, then replace password with ID, and that will give you the ID. Without typing in raw PostgreSQL queries, we can access the data in our database using Python-like syntax. Now, what happens if there was no such match found? So if the username we are checking does not already exist in the database, if there is no match, then this whole expression, it will return none. We can essentially say, if the object is not none, there already exists a username in the database that matches the one the user is trying to register. Since username must be unique, let's return an error and let's blame it on someone else. In a subsequent video, we'll go through Flask WT form custom validation, and we'll do something more interesting with this rather than just return a text.
if we have cleared the validation and the username was not a duplicate one, then we can add username and password to the database. Now to add, we need to do three things. First, create a user object which has the username and the password. This first value is the name of the column in the database, which is username. And the second value right here is this username which we extracted from the form. This form that we see right here. So whatever value the user enters over here, it's going to get stored in this username variable. And that is the one which is used over here. Aside from username, we also want to store the password in the database. Just like username, the first value is the name of the column. And the second value is this password which we retrieved from the form. Now that we have created the user object, we need to add it to the session. So it's db.session.add the user. And the final step is to commit the session. Let's return a confirmation text. Great. So now we can test the form. We go to the form. Let's put the first username as user1. Password is test. Confirmation password is test. Oh, oh there's a typo. So right here. Let's refresh the page. Insert it into DB. So we have successfully added one value into the database. So let's go confirm that. So there's our table with the three columns to view all the users, table, and then the name of the table. As you can see, we have successfully added user one with the password test. Now let's go register another user and see if the column auto increments. I'm going to call this user two. The password, I'm going to keep it as test. Insert it into DB. Let's go back and confirm. As you can see, user2 has been added and the ID has also auto incremented. We did not have to increment the ID. It just auto incremented because the data type that we used was uh, serial and not int. The last thing to make sure is that we get the appropriate error message when we try to register a duplicate username. So let's go back and try and re-register user1. Password could be anything. So we can see that the error message that we had configured over here, that same error message does appear. This was a very simple illustration on how to use Flask SQL Alchemy. There's a whole lot of more useful things we can do with Flask SQL Alchemy. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below and we could do a more in-depth video series on this. Let's commit the changes that we have done. So I'm going to quit PostgreSQL, get status. So we have modified application.py and we have created a new file. So let's add this to the repositories and let's commit all the changes. Connect to database. In the next video, we will go back and rewrite some parts of the code and use WT Forms custom validator. So there is more work to be done on this form itself. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.